It's a simple five minute check. All you need to do is tap the screen when you hear a series of tones at different volumes and frequencies. After you take a hearing test, your AirPods Pro are transformed into a personalized hearing aid. Hello. So here we are at Apple uh, in Cupertino in San Francisco. And we are inside some of where the magic happens for the new hearing aid feature on the earpods. This machine right here is what you'd use if you were getting your ears tested at an audiologist. And then on the left here, this is where they can check how well this technology works against the technology that you'd get if you went to an audiologist. And uh, yeah, this is where you can get your hearing checked at Apple. Yeah, a lot of our learning came from the Apple Hearing Study. Mm -hmm. So Apple Hearing Study is one of the largest longitudinal hearing studies, about 160,000 participants. And from there, we saw that a number of participants had hearing loss and didn't know it. That wasn't surprising to us. Mm -hmm. um, but we found a lot of participants had hearing loss and knew it, and 75% of them never went on to use corrective technology. Amazing. And so when we dug into why, uh, it often dealt with themes like cost or access or stigma. Mm -hmm. And so that was really our, our kind of target focus is finding not necessarily those users who are already using traditional hearing aids. Those, those folks um, are not worried about it. It's more of the, the people that hadn't found their way to that technology. And so we weren't comparing side by side with traditional hearing technologies, but more so how do we, how do we lower that activation barrier to help people understand their hearing and, and take action? Here we are in the long wave anechoic chamber at Apple. This is a space where there are no echoes. So I can click nothing echoes. The purpose of this room is to test how sound funnels into the body. Then they can use that research to make the new hearing aid feature on the AirPods sound as natural as possible. Pretty cool. It's a lot going on in such a tiny device. So I guess my question is, you know, how long has that taken to develop and how many sort of iterations have there been along the way? Sure. Well, there's sort of the vision is where we start, right? We yeah. say, hey, these products can do incredible things. What if, right? Yeah. And it's always a journey to what the next thing is. But, you know, generation over generation, we have a vision of what we think we want to achieve. And then there's sort of the engineering reality of how close yeah. did we get to that. And of course, we had AirPods Pro generation one with a bunch of, of features that we're really excited about and having, for example, transparency sort of give us this hint that we might have something that we could do more with, but we certainly didn't have the capability at that time. So as we were defining H2 and starting to think about what was coming next, we said, oh, maybe we could sort of poke around here and see what we can do. And as, as you've seen with the product, the end result was even more amazing than we would have imagined when we started the journey. And so how long from end to end, what are we, what are we talking? It, I would measure it in years. I, yeah. I think that the you know the idea of trying to do things to help people's hearing has probably been around I don't know at least five or six years. But mm -hmm. but not necessarily having the technology blocks to get there meant that it was more of an aspiration than an actual thing we could work on. And then mm -hmm. I do think, as we were saying, the H2 chip really unlocked a level of computational power that we would not have been able to create the hearing aid feature without. So that's a couple years in the making to get to uh, AirPods Pro 2. So here we are inside of one of Apple's audio labs. So we get a totally quiet space so they can create their own soundscapes in here and uh, test the new hearing aid feature. Obviously it is for people with moderate hearing loss and you're not I'm assuming expecting them to sort of wear them all day and all night. Like that's not the purpose of these pods, right? <laughs> or, I was yeah. gonna say, I think maybe we've been even a little surprised. We might have thought exactly what you were saying, but I think when people realize how profound the impact is on their lives, I think they're wearing them more than we would have expected. You know, that stretching that through the day, the loud sound reduction is something that even for those of us who don't have hearing loss mm -hmm. is a great feature because preventatively it helps us from not ending up in a place with hearing loss. So I think we're seeing a lot of, um, let's call it opportunistic use, but mm -hmm. I think that culturally that's going to become more, more present over time. Yeah, okay. And I guess my final question is just to what extent can these help people? 
Uh, so across the board, it certainly can help uh, protect people's hearing when they're in these loud environments, make people more aware of their hearing and changes over time mm -hmm. in the context of their other health. And then of course, the ability to, to intervene with gain uh, for those with mild to moderate hearing loss. Mm -hmm. So enhance the environment around them, how we communicate with others, how we experience the world around mm -hmm. us. Great. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs>